even though we've been doing this for so many years, despite all the experience, I go to each wedding feeling nervous, still. The scale of our operation um, is dependent on the size of the event typically. So it really can vary between a team of three to sometimes a team of five. We call it fantasy and reality. So the fantasy being the couple portraits that look like they're from a fashion magazine. And they're inspired by you know, maybe movie scenes or actually from fashion or art and architecture and you know, that sort of thing. The reality is actually just pure documentary. It's capturing what we see and what we feel in front of us. Asian weddings are, are different because of the scale, um, the amount of culture and history that goes into it. People are always amazed with how much equipment we turn up with. You know, we've got three 1DX Mark IIs and three 1DX Mark Ones, and probably about 15 different L-series lenses. Uh, my go-to is uh, the 1DX Mark IIs with a 7200 on one side and I usually start with the 2470 uh, Mark II on the other. The 1DX is, is a performance machine, you know, it's incredibly quick. So I didn't know what to expect from the EOS R. The EOS R arrived the day of the wedding. As far as weddings go, this was probably the most elaborate of the year. I think the wedding itself had something like seven or 800 people and I had that morning to customize both cameras and get to know them. But what fascinated me was how easy they were to actually, uh, A, customize, but how familiar they were. Customization is critical in what we do. Many, I think, because as creatives, we all work in different ways, but also we all have muscle memory. And if there isn't the customization, it can hinder the way you work, particularly if you need to switch between a photojournalistic brain to uh, a portrait brain to a landscape brain to you know sports photographer brain and you can actually have a little bit of all of those at a wedding we were going from day to night and you know the wedding itself was in changeable conditions because the market was transparent the sun was going in and out it was hot and we're on our feet for 16 hours we're always open to the emotion of the day uh, as well as just observing what's going on, but the emotion is a key thing, and that's, that'll lead us. So when you can see that there's some kind of engagement emotionally between people, there are parts of the ceremony which kind of slow down, and you'll catch an expression, or you'll catch eye contact, or something like that. I was using the eye focusing pretty much all the way through, which was awesome, because it meant that I could shoot qu quite wide open, more wide open than I'd be used to shooting. You know, with a 51.2, um, with older lenses, I might steer clear of 1.2, but here I was happy just to stay at 1.2 and it would nail the focus every single time. My approach when I'm shooting is to generally underexpose by a third or two. Um, I always protect the highlights because there's a lot more latitude in the shadows. I create contrast with lighting, you know, rather than actually bumping up contrast in post-production later on. But the dynamic range is a key thing. I, I want it to look as realistic and human-like as possible because you know, our eyes can see so many more stops of dynamic range than the camera can. I think there's a perception that, you know, if you're a pro, then your equipment needs to be bigger. And I think we've all fallen, fallen for that at some stage as well, but I think that's going away. With the EOS R, the size, the weight, um, the, the EVF being able to see all that information and review the image as I'm shooting, the silent shutter, um, an articulated screen, that was fantastic. It did everything I needed it to do on the day and it didn't falter. The single card slot issue, I think, has been blown out of proportion. Technology is so much more reliable than it's ever been, and SD technology is so much more reliable than it's ever been. So the fact that the EOS R has one card slot isn't your problem. What we do is so valuable. It's creating a legacy for that couple and their family, their kids, their grandkids, forever. The bride lost her mother when she was um, probably 13 or 14. And I can relate to that. I lost my mom when I was 15. So I'm very sensitive to these things as well. And that's why photographs are so important to me, actually. Uh, and it's one of the things that we try to explain to brides and grooms when they come to see us, that their photographs will be priceless to them in the future because we will all lose somebody along the way. You know, they just don't know it yet.